this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to crochet the button up basket, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you'll find both right and left handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and links to all of the supplies you need, as well as any other video tutorials that I've referenced here today. To make this pattern, you'll need Red Heart Sweet Home, any color. Obviously, this one's red, and I made the original basket in a gray. This one's called Steel. You'll also need four buttons, approximately one and three quarters inch or 44 millimeters. Um, again, that's four. I only have one here on the table, but there are four on the basket. And you'll also need, of course, stitch markers, a yarn needle, and for the hook, I've got a USL eight millimeter by Clover. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the finished basket. Okay, here's the finished button up basket. You can see, like most baskets, it's got four sides and a bottom here, and it's almost all worked in rows. The only round is one round all around the base before we make the sides. And each of these sides is made separately. Now these aren't just decorative buttons, these are functional buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and unbutton the button up basket here so you can see what it looks like before we button it up. Because of course all the crocheting will be done flat. Then at the very end, you simply put the buttons through the buttonholes we'll make and it becomes a basket, which is just a lot of fun. Now you may notice here, those are printed buttons on the back. I bought these a while back and didn't like the print, so I've used the opposite side. Um, but obviously you can use whatever sort of buttons you like. So here it is all unbuttoned. And as you can see, it's actually basically a square with two buttonholes on each side and a button, just like so. So let's go ahead and get started on the actual stitching for the button up basket. Okay, so to begin our button up basket, we're going to start with row one of the base. We are simply going to start with a stitch, or excuse me, a slip knot on the hook, and then we are going to chain 12. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There we are. Now we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across so that we have a total of 11 single crochets at the end of our first row. I like to work into the bottom hump of each chain rather than under the top two loops, but you can do whichever you prefer. So I'm going to skip that one closest to the hook and go to the next one. Go right in there, pull up my loop and make my single crochet. So I'll do that 10 more times here until I have 11 single crochets made at the end of row one. So I will see you when we get to the end of row one. Okay, so here we are at the end of row one and I have 11 single crochets made. Now we're going to begin row two but rows two through nine are all exactly the same. We chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. So basically the first nine rows total are just 11 single crochets in each row. So go ahead and make single crochet rows until you have nine rows made and I will see you at the end of row nine. Okay, so after you've made nine rows of 11 single crochets each, then it is time to make round 10. This is the only round of our pattern. Everything else is worked back and forth in rows. So what we're going to do now is chain one and turn and single crochet right back across the previous row. So for the first 11 stitches here, it's going to be just like what we were doing before in the previous rows. So just make a single crochet in each one across here until you get to the very end. All right, so we've made our 11 single crochets across. Now, instead of turning to work back the other direction, we're going to turn 90 degrees, just turn our work this way, and single crochet nine evenly along the side. So now we're not going to do any chaining or work any extra stitches here. We just wanna work nine single crochets right along the side here. So that means if you work one into the side of each of those previous rows, you should have your nine single crochets. So there's two, three, four and one of the great things about this yarn because it is so uh, fuzzy and has such great texture you can really just kind of stick your hook right in the side there and not worry too much about exactly where you're sticking it although i do always like to have two loops above my hook and at least one loop below my hook when i'm splitting stitches like this to work into the edge looks like i've got just a couple more left here so here we are down at the first row that we made here I wanna try and work right into that last one there. Now let me just double check and make sure I got nine there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 across the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine along the side. 
Now we're ready to turn 90 degrees again and single crochet evenly across the foundation chain. Remember we had 11 stitches down here, so we should have 11 stitches along this side as well. So we just single crochet in each of these, one, two, and this is where I really like having worked into um, the bottom hump of each chain rather than under those top two loops, because now when I work back in that foundation chain, I've got those two loops ready for my hook right there. Very easy to see exactly where to stitch. So I'll just continue working my way across here. And you can see it does cause a little bit of a curve because we didn't work any extra stitches at the corners. It's pulling up a little bit, but this will only help our basket in the long run. This will help it be a little sturdier and stand up a little bit. And it'll also calm down a little bit when we put those other stitches in for the sides. So let's see here. That should be 11 stitches right across the bottom. So we've got our sides here. Looks like that was the last one on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So that just leaves our final side here, which of course gets nine more stitches along this side, one this side of each row. And then we can slip stitch join to the first single crochet we made for round 10. So I'll continue single crocheting along this side and see you when we get to the end of round 10. Okay, so when you get to the end of round 10, you should have a total of 40 single crochets made. But before we make that slip stitch join, it's time to put in our stitch markers. And I actually like to do this before I make that slip stitch because it's a little easier to see right where that first stitch is. So I'm gonna pull up my loop and set my hook aside. And then I'm gonna pull in three stitch markers. And starting with that very first stitch, I'm going to count to stitches 11, 21, and 31 and put stitch markers there. So we'll start with the first one and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right there. And then continue counting 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Get our next stitch marker right in there. And then 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. And what this will do, it will, oops, there we go. This will tell us exactly where uh, to begin each one of those four sides of the basket. So we're going to start the first side from the stitch we joined to, but then we'll break and start again in each of these stitch markers. So with the stitch markers in place, we can go ahead and get that loop back on the hook here, and then slip stitch join to that very first stitch made. And then we're ready to begin side one. Okay, so to begin side one, we're going to start with a chainless starting double crochet. If you're not familiar with that and would like to see a tutorial just for that stitch, I do have a separate tutorial for it linked at the link in the description and here on the Moogly YouTube channel. Uh, if you prefer not to use the chainless starting double crochet at all, you can substitute a chain three or your preferred double crochet starting method. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my loop, yarn it around the hook, insert my hook right in that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and finish the stitch. Then I'm going to half double crochet right back in that same first stitch, the one we slip stitch joined to, like so. With this thick bulky yarn, it can take a minute to pull the loops through, but it really does work up pretty quickly because the stitches are so darn big. So then we can single crochet in the next seven stitches. So we'll come over here and do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And you'll know if you're in the right place if you've got two more stitches left before that first stitch marker. So in the next stitch, we are going to single crochet and then half double crochet. So we single crochet in the next stitch and then half double crochet right back in that same stitch. And then in the last stitch before that first stitch marker, and pull up a little bit more yarn here, that we are going to half double crochet and double crochet. So we go a half double crochet, and then right back in that same stitch, we work a double crochet. Then we're going to leave the remaining stitches unworked until we work those other sides. So that should be 13 stitches total in row one. Okay, so to begin row two, we are going to turn and then start the same way with a chainless starting double crochet in the very first stitch. So I'll pull up my loop and go right in that first stitch for my chainless starting double crochet, like so. Then I'm going to half double crochet right in that same stitch. And then I'm going to half double crochet and single crochet in the next stitch. So I go to the next stitch, work a half double crochet, followed by a single crochet right back in that same stitch. So you can see already with these addition of extra stitches here on the end, we're getting quite an angle. 
Then we are going to single crochet in the next 10 stitches. Now we should have just one stitch left here at the end and we are going to half double crochet and double crochet in this last stitch. So just like so, we get under those loops, half double crochet, and then double crochet right back in that same stitch. So you can see we're adding two stitches at the end of this side of the rows and one stitch at the end of this side of the rows. So this one is also angling out but not as far as this one and this will play into our basket later. Now it's time for row three. At the end of row two you should have had 16 stitches. So we're going to turn and work row three back the other direction starting again with our chainless starting half double crochet. Then we're going to half double crochet right back in that same first stitch and then we single crochet in the next 13 stitches. One, all right, and after making those 13 stitches, you should have two stitches left here at the end. So we're going to work a single crochet followed by a half double crochet in the next one, like so. And then in the very last stitch, we'll work a half double crochet followed by a double crochet. So you may be picking up on a bit of a, uh, a pattern here in our rows basically taller stitches on the ends to help keep that top straight line as much as possible although that will curve at the end which is kind of nice too and we're getting those angles out the sides so now it's time for row four we'll turn and come back the other direction starting again with a chainless starting half double crochet and half double crochet in the first stitch so here is our double crochet followed by a half double crochet and then a half double crochet followed by a single crochet in the next stitch. So half double crochet and single crochet, both right in that second stitch there. And then we're going to single crochet in the next 16 stitches. Okay, so after you've crocheted your 16 single crochets, there should be one stitch left and that will get a half double crochet and a double crochet, both worked right into the top. Now, if you are making the chainless starting double crochets, I haven't been doing it here, but it can make it a little easier to put a stitch marker in the top of each one of those under those top two loops to help you come back and work back into it if you are struggling with that a little bit. But at the end of row four, you should have 22 stitches and be ready for row five. To begin row five, we'll of course turn again and work a single, or excuse me, a chainless starting double crochet and half double crochet in the first stitch. So we'll pull up our loop and make that chainless starting half double crochet. And this time, let's go ahead and put one of those stitch markers on it. So right as soon as I pull through to finish the stitch, I'm going to grab a stitch marker and just put it right under those top two loops. So if you have any struggles with this, this is a good tip to help you find those top two loops to work back into. Then of course, like I say, we need another half double crochet worked right in that same stitch there, like so. And then we are going to single crochet in the next 19 stitches until there are two stitches left. And I get best, bet you can guess what we're going to do there. So go ahead and single crochet 19 stitches now. All right, so with two stitches left in row five to work into here, we will single crochet and half double crochet in the next one, as you might have guessed and then half double crochet and double crochet in the very last one. So we do a half double crochet and a double crochet. Now row six is where it's going to get interesting, but at the end of row five, you should have 25 stitches. So for row six, we are going to be making our buttonholes. Now with the buttons recommended, skipping three stitches and chaining three makes a perfect size buttonhole, but if you've changed the size of the buttons to something else uh, for your preferred buttons, you may need to play with the size of these buttonholes a little bit. So do keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and begin row six. We're going to start with a chainless starting double crochet right in that very first stitch. Like so. I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in there so that it's easy to find when I come back around. And then I am going to right away chain three. One, two, and three. Then I am going to not work in this stitch again and I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to single crochet in nine stitches after that. So we've got our we've chainless starting double crochet followed by a chain three. Then we skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next nine stitches. So one, two, three. 
N9. And then we're ready for our second buttonhole. Each one of these sides will have two buttonholes on it. So we're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And then this time we're going to skip three stitches. One, two, three. Then we are going to single crochet in the next 10 stitches. And 10, there we go. All right, so with that we have one stitch left, which we've got our stitch marker in here, which makes it a little extra handy. So we're just going to half double crochet and double crochet right in that last stitch. I can even use that stitch marker to kind of open up that space for my hook if need be. So there's the half double crochet and a double crochet. And so then at the end of row six, you should have 28 stitches, including those chains you made. So if you count each of those three chains, then you'll have a total of 28 stitches. You can see we've got one buttonhole here and one buttonhole right here. And that should be just about the right size to get our 44 millimeter buttons through. So then we are ready for row seven. Okay, so to begin row seven, we are going to turn to work back the other direction and start with a chain one, which I actually like to do before I do the turn, but however you like to do it. So chain one and turn or turn and chain one. Then we're going to work a twisted single crochet in each stitch and chain across here. So if you haven't done this before, again, I do have a separate tutorial for it linked at the link in the uh, description here. But basically we're going to go right in that first stitch, like for a normal single crochet, pull up our loop here. Then while we have two loops left on the hook, we wanna pull those up a little extra. So we've got a little extra play in there. And then we are going to literally spin the hook all the way around before we yarn over and pull through. There we are. So let's do a couple more of those together. We go into the next stitch, pull up the loop, spin, oops, no, don't let those loops fall off the hook. Spin the hook all the way around, yarn over, and pull through. If you're having a hard time getting that hook to really pull through, a couple good tips. Make sure that the actual hook portion is pointing down so that it isn't catching the sides and you've got a little extra room there. And also make sure you're pulling up those loops a little bit higher. Right here, this little pole is what gives you that play in the stitches to be able to complete the twisted single crochet. So now that I've made a couple of them here, you can see it can be a little bit of a struggle, but there we go, it pulls through. Now this essentially, it ends up looking basically like a crab stitch or reverse single crochet, but we don't have to work backwards. We're going in the same direction. So some people do find this quite a bit easier. If there's another decorative stitch that you like to end off your rows with, you can absolutely personalize this basket by using that preferred stitch if you like. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep making twisted single crochets in each stitch and chain across until I get to the end of row six here. We're working row seven, but until I get to the end of each of those stitches, so all the way across, and I will see you when we get to that point. Okay, so I've made my twisted single crochets in each stitch and chain across. And you can see I worked into the individual chains here and here, not into those chain spaces. This will give our buttonholes some extra stability. I'm not quite done with row seven yet, however. At this point, I'm going to turn 90 degrees and work single crochets evenly along the side of rows seven through one. So remember, row seven here was our last one, so we're just gonna single crochet evenly right across this angle here. Now, I found that a single crochet of 12 worked out really nicely, but if you single crochet along this edge and you get 11 or 13 and you think it looks nice, that's fine. The actual stitch count here doesn't matter. We just want a nice even row worked across this edge to make it look a little bit better in our finished basket. So I'll go ahead and get that stitch marker out of the way. And then I'm just going to, like I say, turn and work standard single crochets, don't have to make twisted ones anymore here, right along this edge. So again, it doesn't matter if you actually get 12 as long as it looks nice and even right along here. So I'm going to continue working some single crochets here and I will see you when I get to the bottom of this edge. Okay, so after you've finished single crocheting evenly along that edge, it's time to go ahead and break the yarn for side one. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn here. And I like to leave at least six inches to weave in later. So after I cut the yarn, I like to weave it in maybe a little differently right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to slip stitch to anything. I'm going to pull that loop on up and put it on my yarn needle. Now hopefully this yarn needle can accommodate this yarn. Uh, sometimes with these thicker jumbo yarns, you do need to use a larger needle. There we go. Fortunately, this is one of the bigger ones I have in my own stash. So get the yarn on there. And then to go ahead and finish this off, I like to go ahead and send this end right into the base of that last stitch we made back there in row one, or maybe it was the first one, but right there at the bottom, like so, and just pull that on through. And then I can go to the inside of my basket and weave in that end however I like. 
There we go. So we'll just go ahead and drop that for now. But you can see that just finishes it off and gives it a really nice edge right there. So that is side one for our button up basket and we're ready to move to side two. Okay, when it's time to start side two, this is where that stitch marker is gonna come in handy. We want the very first stitch marker, which should be the first marked stitch, or the first stitch rather, after our first side. So what we're going to do now is join with a double crochet, which is also known as a standing double crochet. Again, I do have a separate tutorial for this linked at the link in the description. So I'm going to hold on to my yarn end here in my hook hand, yarn over twice on my hook, and just insert my hook right in that marked stitch where we're going to begin side two. I'm gonna push that stitch marker out of the way there, pull up my loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and without letting go of that end, I'm going to go ahead and half double crochet in the same stitch. Like so. After that, I can go ahead and drop that end. If I want to, I can use a stitch marker to help me find it when I come back along. If so, I like to put um, the stitch marker under that front loop there and then just slide that tail end right through there. And those are the two loops we'll work under when we come back across. After that, it is exactly the same as side one. The only difference was we have to join to that marked stitch with a standing double crochet. Or again, if you prefer not to use a standing double crochet, you can instead join with a slip stitch and chain three or whatever your preferred double crochet starting method is. After that though, like I said, it's exactly the same as row one. So, or excuse me, a side one. We just keep working across and keep working just as before. So then after we finish side two, of course, we would come over here and join here for side three in the next marked stitch and then side four in the next marked stitch. So you don't have to use these stitch markers if you don't want to. It's always gonna be that next stitch after you finish the first side, but it can be very, very helpful, just especially as you're making that first row to let you know that you're getting all your stitches in there and that you haven't missed anything. So now that you've seen how to make the button up basket, let's go ahead and button it up. Okay, so after you've finished crocheting, it's time to sew on the buttons. What we want to do is lay out the basket flat, just like we've crocheted it, and then we want to make sure that the right side of row seven is facing up. So you should have the buttonhole here at the end on one side, and this would of course not have a button on it just yet, it would just be solid over here with a buttonhole in the middle. So make sure that your angles are facing you just like so. Then on the side without the holes, that's where we're going to go ahead and sew our buttons. Now if you want to, you can just tie a, um, tie a bow after you get the yarn through the button to hold it in place and test it out before you weave in those ends and sew them in. So you can adjust the buttons if necessary, but I found just kind of lining it up right here in the corner worked really well. So you'll want to do that for all four sides, like so, and then as soon as that's done, you're ready to do the folding. So let's go ahead and do that together. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start with this side. It doesn't really matter what side you start with, they should all be the same. In the buttonhole, or excuse me, yes, the buttonhole in the middle, we're going to take this button and send it right on through. Then we can turn a little bit, like so, and in this middle button, or this middle hole, we'll put this button. Turn to the side in this middle hole, button up this button. Turn to this side, middle hole, Got one more button left. And with that, we've got our shape starting like so, but we've still got these flaps sticking out. So these are the flaps we're going to go ahead and wrap on around and send around the buttonhole it lines up with, or rather the button. So wrap it around. So this one on the end can come to this one. This one should go to this one. And finally, this one should go to this one. A little zhuzh to make sure it's all popped out and beautiful, and we have finished our button-up basket. And that's how to crochet the button-up basket. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Moogly Blog YouTube channel, and don't forget to give Red Heart Sweet Home a try. I really think you'll like it. Have a great day, everybody.